out the vinyl community. It's Lunacy here, and I'm back to do a, a different kind of video today. I'm going to do an artist review. Uh, I have seen a lot of people showing their most current album, and I'm a huge fan of this band, and I have everything they've done, and so I wanted to do a, just a quick review of everything they have and kind of go over some of the stuff with it. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's I'm talking about The Sword, uh, the band The Sword. I have had a chance to see them. I saw them open for Metallica, I think, I want to say back in 2009, it could be 2000, it was the Death Magnetic Metallica Tour. And they opened, they were the beginning opening band for Metallica. Down was also there, but these guys opened uh, for them. And I, I was just blown away at how good they were live. Loved them. I love it. They're, they're very sludge, doom metal, kind of stoner metal feel to them. A lot of their, almost all of their stuff is played in some type of drop tuning, like drop C tuning, so you get that really gritty, hard charging, you know, feel to their to their guitar riffs. Lyrically, they're they're deeper than they sound. But um, I'll just I'll just jump right into it. So the first album I'm gonna go over is the 2006 release called Age of Winters. And this is what we're listening to in the background right now. And you can probably see it on my turntable right there. It's blue vinyl. And I, I really like uh, their packaging is great. Almost everything comes, everything I have comes on colored vinyl. Uh, they have awesome cover art. They, they do it right, but you know, when they put it all together, they're almost all gatefolds. And uh, just really good packaging. I loved it. But this is the 2006 release, their, their debut. And a lot of people are going to know this band if you play video games at all because of that song right there, which is Freya. Freya was on Guitar Hero 2 and pretty popular. Uh, actually very popular, kept him on the Guitar Hero franchise for quite a while. And if, if you like if you like any type of doom metal, stoner rock, sludge metal, hard charging guitar riffs, this is a band for you and this is the way to start right here. This is an outstanding album from start to finish. I could listen, I listen to, I've listened to it so many times I can't count. Uh, the, the lead singer, who is J.D. Cronus, is also the main lyricist for this band. He writes almost all the lyrics of all his albums, writes almost everything that they've ever done, and also produced their first three albums. And that's the only kind of, I don't want to say downfall, it's, it's kind of a plus and a minus. Because it was, he produced it, and it was, it, I will say, maybe just a tiny bit Underproduced a little bit. It's kind of sometimes hard to hear the lyrics, and but it does give it that garage band, the garage rock feel to it. Because it's gritty and more more real, you know, like it's done, like it wasn't done in a high dollar studio. It was done by regular people who just grabbed their instruments and played. I like that feel, but at the same point, they could have had the lyrics a little louder, you know, bass a little lower, so we kind of balance it out. But it's very minuscule. It's a very minuscule complaint about this album. This is a fantastic rock record. I highly recommend it to anybody. That's their debut, 2006, Age of Winners. They moved on in 2008 to Gods of the Earth. There's the cover, Gods of the Earth. Again, gatefold, really good packaging. Came on colored vinyl also. It's kind of hard to tell, but this is actually, it looks white, but it's actually like a light blue marble. There's some light blue fleck marble inside of it. And again, this is, this was featured on Guitar Hero. Uh, the Black River, I believe, was featured on Guitar Hero Metallica. And I think Maiden Mother and Crone, the song Maiden Mother and Crone was on Guitar Hero 5. Um, so they continued on with the Guitar Hero franchise. Same thing, it was state produced by J.D. Cronus also, and written almost solely by him, lead, the, lead, uh, the lead of the band, guitarist and vocalist. And he has been interviewed several times, the band has, and he has said very much how heavy he is into fantasy and science fiction novels and how that's influenced him, and this, this record really shows that. There's a song called The Frost Giant's Daughter that is written very... <laughs> very much about Conan the Barbarian and the Conan series. It's written off some short stories by the same author. Uh, and also, the song To Take the Black, 
If you guys have seen the new series, The Game of Thrones, which is, I believe it's George R.R. R. Martin, his, his books, in his books, to take the black, there's a group of people who don all black and live on the wall and protect, uh, basically give up their lives to protect others. And, and that's, this song is directly influenced by that, to take the black. So he's very, it's very heavy into science fiction. And you know, if you like that sort of thing, which I do, it, it's right up your alley. So the lyrics are a little deeper when you start, I mean, it sounds like a, like a hard charging rock band, but it, the lyrics are a little deeper than that. And they go, they have some influences outside of the music industry, which I like. I really enjoy that that feel of, of those type of lyrics. I mean, followed up with awesome guitar and huge riffs, and you can't beat it. So this is 2008, Gods of the Earth. And the next, this is 2010's. 2010 is Warp Riders. And again, it's outstanding packaging. Great gatefold. This is on colored vinyl, as, as all the others. And it is on like, it's kind of hard to see, but it's a transparent, yeah, you, know, you, you can't see it pretty well, actually. Transparent blood red. This album is, is to me, this, all these are my opinion, guys, so, so hang in there. To me, this is this album is amazing. This is a one of my favorites. I find myself grabbing this one more than any other, and it has a little different feel because this is a loosely well, he, he it's, it's a concept album. JD Cronus, who is the main writes most of the lyrics for all the things as I've said before for all of his out al all the sword albums, heavy into science fiction, has said in interviews that you know it can be difficult, daunting to come up with 10, 12 songs on a record with different themes to it. So he said, we're gonna try something new and it, even, it, hopefully it doesn't alienate his the listening, the listeners, of, the fans of this band. So he wrote a concept album um, of a short story that he wrote himself or that he is writing himself. And it's basically about this, a person named Eroth, who is an archer on this planet called Acheron, Acheron, and basically it's about the planet being split in, not being split in half, but half of the planet is burned by suns and hot and daylight all the time, the other half is in perpetual darkness at all times, and it's about the struggles of Eroth the Archer living in this world, living in this land, and if you watch some of the videos, uh, that they've made, it's all themed around that. And so lyrically, it's all it's it's all about that. Opening with Acheron and unearthing the orb. So it's like from the beginning, you're, it starts talking about the planet and moving on. It's not over, it's not overpowering, overwhelming, that they have to stay on this theme. It, it, it's still hard charging, very, you know, drop tuned, great guitar riffs. He produced this one as well, but it was it seemed a little better produced. Everything was balanced out, sounded amazing. And it's got some great songs on here. There is a song, the last song on the A side called Lawless Lands. If you can YouTube that or look that up, that song is just fantastic. So this one was very, very good to me. I really like that. I like the idea of the concept album, just, you know. Uh, and not not continuing on with it, but having one album, just his concept of his own stuff that he brought in. I really, really enjoyed it. Go check this out. It's it's outstanding. Warp Riders, 2010. Oh, inside that, at the same time as that 2010, they put out, I mean, it's that album, same year, they put out a 12-inch single. I'll take it out here. They put out a 12-inch single hexagonish shaped uh, vinyl to kind of coincide with that. It has the Night the Sky Cried Tears of Fire, obviously the fire side of that earth, and Far Star is the other, is the B side. 
And this was, they only made, I don't remember, I think they only made a thousand of these. Don't quote me on that. There could, there could have been more of those, but they, they made a limited number, I'll say that. They made a limited number of these. And I happened to be in my record store, they had a couple left over. So I went ahead and, and picked them up. Or picked it up just to complete the collection. It was okay. Uh, you know, nothing fantastic. Just kind of a cool thing the band did. It was inexpensive and, you know, just kind of a follow-up to their to their album, Warp Riders. So that's their single, 12-inch single, Hexagon. It was also 2010. I'll show this album again. I've showed it and several other people have showed it as well. This is their 2012 release. The Sword, Apocryphon. Again, packaged amazing. Uh, gatefold, colored vinyl. This one is on uh, like an orange marble. And you've seen this before. I've shown this before. The teacher's shown this. Several other people have shown this. And even though it sure looks like it, like it should follow that same theme, it's not a concept album. Uh, this one was again, 90% of the songs written by J.D. Cronus, but this one was not produced by him. They switched and got brought somebody up from the outside. Um, and it, my, his name is escaping me. I'll try to put it in down here. I, uh, he also produced some Mastodon records, a few other, bands well known so it was different for them to go to the outside and man this one is well produced this this album is fantastic also everything that they did is uh is fantastic so and most people have heard this it's the same feel doom sludge metal um decent kind of deep underseating lyrics if you listen to them well and, and, and read them but a little more polished this album was a little more polished to me and i, and I very much like that it, and like I said before, it's kind of a double-edged sword because you lose that little bit of garage band feel to it, that little bit of you know up-and-coming band feel to it, in my very humble opinion. But this this still has some very, very, very good songs. The Veil of Isis, which is the opening track on side A, is uh, amazing. It, it really, and, and all the way through, uh, Seven Sisters, amazing, um, and Dying Earth. Just a lot of really, really good tracks on this album. Very, very solid release, and I'm super excited to see what they're going to do in the next two years, because it seems like they're, they've done a 2006, 2008, 10, and 12. Hopefully they get something out in 14. I wish it was sooner, but it's not. If you have a chance to see this band, go check them out. They're very, very good live. Um, very much enjoyed them. So that's just my recap, or my, my uh, overall view on The Sword, uh, my artist review. That's everything that they've put out. I know this isn't extremely informative, but I don't want to make it too long, and I'll add a few things in um, at the bottom there. So uh, I'm, I'm going to try to do a, little, a few more of these on bands that I have a lot of or that I follow and know a little bit about. Hopefully you guys like them. Let me know in the comments in the comments about if you like this or if you want to see more of this. That'd be great. Follow my blog uh, if you want to do that as well. Uh, I have a link that... Uh, on my profile page in YouTube, and I'll put a link down at the bottom as well. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.